everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we are talking about how to enforce your purpose. Today I have a special guest with me, Brian Holmes. It's good to have you with us. I'm honored to be here. It's I'm great. excited to have you. Now, before we move any further, we're going to be talking about soul ties. Um, Brian has written a book on soul ties. He's going to be talking a lot about uh, personal healing, development, deployment, all the fun things. On an affectionate level, he is my personal life coach, so I'm honored to have him here. But don't forget to hit that subscribe button if this is your first time ever being here. Hit that like button. Leave us a comment. We love to get comments. Only if they're positive, though. Don't leave us any negative comments. We don't want that on this page. Um, but I'm excited to have you here. I'm going to kind of kick it over to you to kind of share a little bit about your heart and, and what compelled you to write these books. Well, sure. Let me start, though, by saying I'm really honored to be here with you. Um, I say this just in total sincerity. Uh, I respect you so much because you walk the walk. You don't just talk the talk. You're an amazing speaker, coach, trainer, all those things. But in, in me working with you over the last three or four years, my observation is, is that you you lead by example. Mm. And so I just want to commend you for that. Thank and, you. and thanks for having us in today. Yeah, I think it'll absolutely. be a, a great topic to talk about. I think what led me to deal with this topic really was very personal for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I share my testimony all over the world, and if, I'll take two seconds just to sure, give you the high-level cliff notes of that. But, uh, you know, I was raised in a very religious home, a very uh, church-going type home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were taught value of relationship with mm -hmm. God, all these types of things. But it's a very legalistic type of an environment. Mm -hmm. But when I was 11 years old, I had a very tragic and difficult thing happen mm. to me as a child. And... Uh, and I was broken, man. I was utterly broken uh, because of what had happened there with that. And my religious environment did not allow for yeah. any type of transparency sure. or openness or, or coming forward with something. So at 11 years old, undeveloped in my brain, undeveloped in my, my psyche, I, I had to do what what every human does, and that is to stuff it away, mm. compartmentalize it, mm. and manage it the best way an 11-year-old mm -hmm. knows how. Well, yeah. that that became sort of a, an emotional cancer, if you will. And so my my adolescence, my my young my my teenage life, my young adult life was just horrible. It was so much anger, shame, guilt, condemnation, addictive behaviors, mm. destructive behaviors, all the while. Lisa, still loving God, yeah. still yeah. doing ministry. I was ordained at 16 years old, for crying out loud, wow. and mm -hmm. had some phenomenal opportunities as a young man, but still very, very broken. Brought all that garbage into my marriage. Mm. And at the time, we were on staff of a church in Irving, Texas. Uh, brought all that garbage into my marriage, and then we eventually transitioned out to, to pastor our own church. Mm -hmm. However, uh, in 99, 2000, uh, 99 my dad passed away really suddenly and that was that was a bad thing for me in that uh, I'd always longed for a relationship with my dad affirmation from my dad yeah. uh, and never really received that yeah. and so I was at a very difficult place in my journey with all this other garbage I was carrying mm -hmm. and then this was kind of the tipping point for me so mm -hmm. from 99 to 2000 we were I was in a really really tough spot mm -hmm. emotionally spiritually in every way 2000, uh, we were blessed to to go into a program where we received some healing. It was, interestingly enough, a secular program, not a church program. Funny yeah, how that works, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't surprise <clears throat> me. Uh, but that was the saving grace for me. It was, it was literally the it was the 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 catalyst, as it were, for me to experience transformation. That honestly, even as a believer, a minister, and everything else. I really did not know I could experience yeah. for myself, yeah. and I did. And so I, I said all of that is very snippet type version of my story mm -hmm. to say that coming out of that experience in 2000, I began to really seek understanding, man, how does this all work? I've yeah. been preaching in churches, teaching in churches, traveling all over the world, seeing amazing things happen. However, why is it that so many people still remain yes, broken yes. and messed up mm -hmm. and, and hiding and yes. all these sort of things? And so I kind of went on this quest to, to understand. And I began to ask God, look, how do I, how do I make sense of what yeah. was happening in my life? Mm -hmm. And that's when we begin to understand uh, 
a number of things, including the concept of the soul of man, how it works, how it operates, mm -hmm. uh, how it functions, and most importantly, really, how do you how do you heal the broken soul, so mm -hmm. to speak? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, over the years, we've written books about that, and, and I've kind of developed this framework. If I can share that real Absolutely. quick, uh, you this know is, a little bit about this. This is your show. No, <laughs> no I'm sorry. I love it. No, no, no I, this is all about. I, I love it. So the, the framework that I sort of, uh, I, I've always placed a high value on personal development. Mm -hmm. Even as a kid, yeah. I was listening to people like Zig Ziglar and Jim yep. Rohn and yep. all these guys. I was, I was a very weird kid because none of my <laughs> friends were doing that stuff, okay? Uh, but that's why, I'm where, that's why I'm where I'm at today. That's They're right. not, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, but I, I really always valued that piece of it, but I, I learned there was something missing. There's really what I call four cornerstones to living a strategic, yeah. a successful, a I'm prosperous life. I'm so happy life. you're going to share this. I really love this. And I, I talk about this in my book, yeah, Enforcing yeah. Purpose. Yeah, Aww. in the very beginning, I talk about you as my life coach and talk about the the process of the four cornerstones. Yeah, it, so it's a, let's hit it. it's such a simple yeah. little deal, but, but it makes sense. It's a way for us to kind of wrap our heads around mm -hmm. how does one construct the life that God has already designed for you, but then we've got to go build it, right? Yes, That's the piece. Yes, yes. Uh, God, this whole idea of destiny, we, we treat the idea of destiny as though it is uh, some magical thing that just happens out of the blue. Mm -hmm. No, there is a design. There mm -hmm. is a purpose. There is obviously a, uh, a, a const uh, I, I guess, a plan, if you will, mm -hmm. for your life that God has uh, already put together out of his infinite wisdom and understanding and the beauty of how he creates, he's set things in motion for you to have tremendous impact, success, influence, all these things. Yeah. But the, the interesting thing is we've got to go and start from the beginning and we've got to construct per those plans. Yeah. So the four cornerstones that I talk a lot about are, uh, starts with personal healing. We'll talk a lot about that in these coming episodes. Personal discovery. Who am I? Why am I here? Basically, what what's how am I wired, made up, constructed? What mm -hmm. what what is it about me that's unique, and how can I leverage that? Yeah. maximize that. I always say, what what makes you tick, and what ticks you off? <laughs> <laughs> she has a way with words. I'm telling you right now. All right. So personal discovery. Then I then personal development comes in. That is the intentional. Uh, working of growing oneself. If you want to be strong in your body, you go to the gym, you work out, you do strength training, yeah. you do very strategic things depending on what your objectives are. But you have to do the work of developing that stuff. It's the same thing with our businesses, with our marriages, with our relationships, with anything else. Mm -hmm. There has to be some work put in, some very strategic mm -hmm. work put in as to develop the things we need to develop to be the person God's already designed us to be. Mm -hmm. So personal development. So personal healing, discovery, then development, and then comes effective deployment. I love that you right. threw the word effective yes, in there. Yes, yes. Because we can go do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we can we, birth all kinds of Ishmael. We can deploy. <laughs> and we can go create and we can go, you know, make money. But but effective as being defined by what did God see yes. when he saw you today. Yes. Right. Yes. In 2021, when this is being recorded, for example, what did God, when he looked ahead in your life, what did he prescribe for you in this season? Yes. An effective deployment is, am I walking in, performing in, doing the things, and, and having the impact that God saw me having mm -hmm. today? That's mm -hmm. the key. Mm -hmm. So that's how I define effective, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I think about the, the passage that says that the yoke of the Lord is easy and his oh, yeah. burden is light, right? So when we're yoked with God... Um, that deployment that we feel like he's he's alluring us into because God doesn't push us right. He no, allures no. us he into places. Yes, there's an invitation to partner with yep. Him, and it's crazy when you get in sync with the Holy Spirit through really through that personal healing, mm -hmm. the discovery and the development. A lot of that is really just syncing up with God and His design for Absolutely. you, getting in sync with that, and then this deployment just comes up out of you, and yeah. it becomes easy. It's, it's easy. It's, and, it's natural. It's organic. It right. just it flows. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where in my books, Enforcing You, Enforcing Purpose, you know, Enforcing You is more on that personal healing, the personal discovering, discovering who am I, and then we move to the development and that deployment mm -hmm. in how do I enforce my purpose yeah. now. 
So I love these four corners. And as you said, I believe it's applicable not just to the person as an individual, but it's applicable to businesses, organizations. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about that. So so these principles work in in every area. So let's just take as an example business, okay? Okay. Uh, I do a good bit of business consulting. I enjoy it. Uh, I, I tend to find, you know, some grace doing that. And when I'm talking to a business owner and looking at their business, inevitably I'm going to find uh, deficits in all four of these areas. <laughs> it's interesting. You say, well, how could there be personal healing issues in a business? Well, it, actually there could be personal healing issues in a number of compartments in a business. One businesses are run by people yeah <laughs> <laughs> and people are jacked up okay uh, businesses are are going to rise or fall to the level of the freedom the success the competency all of these things that the individual has arrived at so if, if you can understand this leadership sets the ceiling for any business venture any organizational venture and so it, leadership it, sets the ceiling. It sets the ceiling. Uh, yeah, I just want to make yeah. sure they caught that, that the leadership sets the ceiling. John Maxwell has for yeah. years referred to this as the law of the lid. I and love so it. And so it's yes. the same idea is that if, if a leader has certain skill sets, competencies, or broken places that are unreconciled or personal issues that are going on that are eating away at his, his heart, mm-hmm. his, his ability to function, at some level, at some point in time, that's going to set the limits or the ceiling on how far he or she can take this company. So personal healing is a big deal. I will tell you, uh, Lisa, in so many of my engagements with companies, I, I had a client uh, last year, I worked with them nearly the entire year, and at the end of the day, 90% of the mess, and this was a huge national company, mm-hmm. 90% of the mess that we had to clean mm-hmm. up was a direct uh, result of the incredibly broken places that had never been dealt with mm. in, the, in the leader's heart. Mm. And so uh, personal healing is a big deal. Personal discovery. So in a company, in a business, if you're running, whether you're, you're a solopreneur or a larger business, you got to know, you know, uh, how am I wired? What do I like to do? What do I not like to do? How? Because mm-hmm. the things you don't like to do, you should delegate, right? So it's all about discovering who you are, why you're here, what what works, what doesn't work for you. Where mm-hmm. do I need to fill in gaps? All that's a part of that discovery mm-hmm. and, and exploration process yeah. of knowing who you are or who your business is and yeah. what it's out to do. Uh, personal development, again, I mean, do I need to talk about that? Training, development of your leaders, development of your staff, development of your person your, in your own personal leadership. And then, of course, deployment. If you take on a new project or a new client or whatever, at some point you've got to engage. You've got to get after that thing. But leading up to that, I recommend you go through the process of looking at all these angles mm-hmm. because your success in this new endeavor will be largely determined mm-hmm. by whether or not you've constructed the, the business this way. So it's, just, mm-hmm. it's an example. It works in all yeah. marriages. Good Lord, we mm-hmm. can spend an hour there. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and again, I know like this, we're not supposed to be talking about all this, but it's such good stuff. I want, I want to bring up another uh, point for you to talk into, and mm-hmm. that is that I think a lot of people, I know in my world, a lot of people like to circle the mountain of personal healing, personal healing, mm, personal, oh my healing personal healing, personal healing, personal healing. And never, and even maybe throw in that discovery, but and possibly the, the development, but they never deploy, never, never. and vice versa, yeah. the opposite. Some people are always deploying in order to avoid mm. personal healing. Oh man! So talk to me for a minute. I can about, talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that, that's such a great. So many you you brought up several points there. Uh, there there are cultures, especially in the religious sector, so to speak, the world that we come from where you know there's such an emphasis placed on this perpetual healing yes. process mm-hmm. you know we're looking for every demon every curse every uh you know everything we can find and what happens is and we, we like to tell people and i do believe this to some degree you know healing does come in layers i get that it's like an onion you know you keep peeling it back <laughs> well at some point you get to the bottom of the onion i'm just saying yeah at some point Amen. Uh, so what we can either make a business out of or a culture out of keeping people perpetually in the healing process Mm -hmm. or we can understand that it's one stop a very important stop but it's one stop in the process of getting people to effective deployment where they can Mm -hmm. actually make a difference make their impact 
fulfill God's assignment in their life. And so uh, that's one piece that you said. The other piece was this idea of where people constantly deploy or busy themselves oh, that's good. or are that's always good. engaging yes. in, well, I do this in the church or I do that or I, you know, I'm going to go to this. People, people tend to be able to hide behind the busyness. That's good. They, they hide behind the resume. Mm-hmm. They hide behind the, this is what I've done or this is what I'm doing. And uh, what I would say to that person is, you are going to be known as a person who can get things done, but in the end, you will not have made an impact. Your Mm -hmm. legacy will be, he was a hard worker. Your legacy will not be, (laughs) he made a difference. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. I love that you brought all that up and and give everybody something to think about. Now, I, like you, we both kind of have that counselor, life coach combination. Mm -hmm. Mm And that, that's the thing that I love about the, the counselor life coach, coach combination is there are times and there are anchors in our life that is keeping us from setting sail. So when we're looking at somebody, we both believe, gosh, God has a path for you. He has a purpose for you. There's a drive in everybody, mm-hmm. right? And if you're not feeling that drive, that is not a part of your design. You are designed right. with, an, with an automatic drive. And so sometimes we don't feel that drive because we have anchors in our life that are keeping us from moving forward and those are the things that we need to really focus on take time to heal discover and cut those anchors loose there are other times when we have the wind in our sails and we're we're trying to you know the holy spirit is moving us forward and we're moving and and again you feel those anchors if you're in that place and that's a you you might be at a place where you need to stop and have some personal healing but now as we're moving forward, right? So I, I, I kind of take a look at this, the sailboat. So you, you are a sailboat and you have a destination. You're, you want to get across the lake to another island. And I, if I can't set sail, I either have anchors or I have lack of wind, right? Yep, that's right. <laughs> and so the lack of wind is when I have lack of direction, lack of passion. That's, that's that development and that deployment piece. Whereas the anchors kind of represents more of that healing and that discovery piece. And so for me, I just like that visual. And, and they do kind of work hand in hand. Yeah. There are times when the, the water gets really rough when you're out in the midst of your journey and you start to, uh, fear begins to get exposed or limiting beliefs. We talk yeah, core, yeah, sure. core lies, limiting beliefs. And we have to stop and go, okay, let's take a look at some of the anchors that are keeping us from really pushing through this storm. Yeah. That's such a great uh, metaphor analogy that you bring up there. And the the key thing is, is that I need to know who I am. Mm -hmm. It's great to know or have some idea of where I'm going, right? What's my destination? Now, I would tell you from, this is from my own personal experience. Uh, if, if, if you're a person who walks a faith walk, if you are, you know, walking with the Lord and, and a day, it's a day to time kind of a thing, that's okay. Because I, I've had to learn in the last eight or 10 years that uh, today's enough. And I get up today and I, I'm, the Lord knows my heart and he knows that I'm, I'm walking with him. Now, there, there are some areas of my life where I'm, I know exactly what I want, exactly what I'm going after. I know exactly how I'm going to get there. I have total clarity and I'm on it. There are other parts of your life that you will have where God says, hey, just walk with me today. Let's see where, you know, mm-hmm. he knows where we're going. I may not know, but I'm, yeah. I'm willing to follow that out. Now, back to your analogy, though, uh, the sailboat needs a destination. I mean, granted, you could get on the lake and just have fun and goof off and whatever. That's that's one thing. But truly, in your in your story, you're talking about moving to another point yes. and, and making progress, so to speak. So you got to know who you are, where you're going, essentially, and then... You have to know what you are tied to, or what is empowering, or that's good. disempowering you. Yes, that's so, good. That's really good. Let me let me just give this little example here, real quick. So you think about, you use the term anchors. Uh, uh, Jim Rohn says you're the five people, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I love that. One of my favorite quotes of his ever. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I have found in seasons of my life where my anchor was actually somebody that I needed to offload. That's good. That's good. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, and I, this may or may not be in the context, but I think it's right. But that doesn't sound biblical. Oh, I'm fixed to give you a scripture right now. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm working it. I'm working it. <laughs> but know, I know what people are thinking, like, that's not biblical. You're not supposed to offload people. To so everything, there's a time here. and a season, right? Absolutely. So, and, and that, that tends to be, there are some relationships that will be with you your whole life. There are some that will be with you for seasons. There are some that you will have to voluntarily offload because they are inhibiting you from going where God is mm-hmm. inviting you, okay? Mm-hmm. So I'll give you an example here real quick. Uh, the scripture that says, let us lay aside every 
weight, you used that term a moment ago, mm-hmm. and the sin that doth so easily beset. That mm-hmm. word beset there is essentially saying that it keeps you from moving in the direction you're supposed to be going. Mm-hmm. It, it, it moves you off course. It, it keeps you mm-hmm. from, from the trajectory you're, you're designed for. And so there are times in our life where we have to reassess. I, I advise people when it comes to relationships specifically to look at that about every three to five years, to sit down, take a relationship inventory and look at, okay, are these, if I look at the average of the value these people are adding so to my life or it's taking so from good. my life, am, are, is, is this combination going to allow me to move in the direction at the pace God is inviting me? Mm-hmm. If it's not, so I've got to make some adjustments. So in that way, that's that's one so idea. Good. Yeah, and so I want to remind you that if you haven't seen uh, my series on healthy relationships, mm. that I do talk a lot about how do I evaluate my relationships. I'm actually in the middle of recording it right now, so I might I might be mixing these up because they yeah, un- they true. overlap so much because relationship is honestly the the best and the worst part of of life in some regard. Yeah, oh yeah. And, and we're designed for that connection, You're right? For it. Um, but you're right. We have to, at some point, I like to say to my clients, let's take a look at every relationship and ask, is this relationship a liability or an asset to your design? Right. Um, and so we talk a lot about that cutting off of your path, my internal path, my external path. Um, so I love that you brought all that up. I feel like this segues nicely into soul ties yeah, because let's really that. that's talking about, you know, when, we're t- when you're talking about offloading, that sounds easy, but gosh, when we're connected to people, and I know we're, I'm getting all ahead of us, but to just kind of give you kind of a precursor of talking about soul ties, let's jump into it. Yeah, let's do it. So, uh, man, there's so much more I want to say about relationships, though. Go ahead. You, <laughs> okay, you let, just... me, let me give you one more thing, and I, I can't draw this for you here on the screen, obviously, but if you could, if you were to draw... Uh, essentially what looks like our, you know, the round target with concentric circles, you know, yes. about mm-hmm. three or four inside the mm-hmm. And I, I like to look at the one in the very middle, the, the bullseye, if you will. That is my core, intimate, covenantal relationships, right? And it's interesting in today's culture, we call everybody a friend. I have 8,500 friends on yeah, Facebook. I no, love you that don't. you said covenantal relationships. Yeah, the, these are people that are... Mm-hmm. They're in the trenches with you, no matter what's going on, no matter what happens. If, if you need something, they're going to do something about it. They're going to be, they're going to take shots for you. They're going to add value to your life. They're going to undergird you. These are just people that are there, okay? Uh, I would like to say that's always family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not. We're not going there, are All we? Right. The, <laughs> next, the next circle out would be people that we would call generally friends uh, that are Social friends. Let's call them social friends. These people we hang out with, go to dinner with, laugh with, cut up with. You know, m- maybe do a vacation with. But these are th- these are close, good friends. Uh, may or may not be with you when the tough times there. Who knows? Next layer out, we'll call it acquaintances. Okay, these are just people you know at church. They hang out with you. Then you've got nowadays you got another circle, which is the social media people, yeah. right? Yeah. Those are people that are just fringe people. And then out here at the very edge, you have what I call the crowd, people you might run across once or twice a year. Uh, You have to know where your relationships fit. That's good. And here's the thing. about This is the key thing I wanted to make uh, you aware of is that sometimes it's okay to move someone if you've held them here, but they really belong over here. That's good. They're still a friend. It's really good. They're still an acquaintance. You're not disavowing them per se. But you're moving them from their from the level of importance mm-hmm. and and trust and weight mm-hmm. you give them from this circle to this circle. So mm-hmm. sometimes you got to make those adjustments. Is what I was yeah. trying to get at. Yeah, and I think I think it's important. We I have talked a little bit in my healthy relationships about um, walls versus boundaries, mm. um, and I think moving them from here to here is when I recognize I need to set kind of a healthy boundary. And it may not be about that person. It may, it may be about be. where I'm at in my relationship right. with the Lord, or it may just be about the season that you're in. Mm-hmm. There have been times that I've had people in this this place, and and then seasons change. They changed, I changed, and we're still dear, dear friends, but they're not in this center place anymore. And so I think it takes a lot of courage to really recognize um, I need to bump this person here, mm-hmm. for lack of a better term. And so mm-hmm. I need to set some boundaries, create some space, uh, maybe put up some healthy boundaries. Maybe that requires a conversation. But we nowadays are really kind of in this cancel culture, right? Where oh, it's just man. so easy to just be it's, like, I'm just kicking you out of my, yes. And I think that's a very so cowardice way of dealing with relationships instead of really learning how to 
And again, it takes a lot of courage to have those conversations or it takes a lot of courage to say, look, I can still have you in my life, but I need to set up some healthy boundaries. And not 99% of the time, it's not about that person. No, it's not. It's about where you are at. And and again, if you've been watching my healthy relationships, I I say over and over again in in those episodes, this is not to empower you to start pointing your fingers at all the people you're in relationship and all the things that is wrong with them. Healthy relationship starts with you, yep, 100% right. and in the mirror. So I love that you brought that up, and, and, and it really kind of connects with that idea of how do we set healthy boundaries with that, which I believe is going to connect with soul ties as yeah, well. Yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, fantastic. So the the idea for me of soul ties, as you've referred to, and it's referred to that, that way in, in our book, The Ties That Bind Here, uh, came to me. Yeah, you can hold that up, sure. Yeah. Uh, it came to me as a part of that process after 2000 and mm-hmm. in my transformation process. And I, I would, God began to teach me and show me things. Again, as you said a moment ago, so perfectly, it wasn't about anybody else that he was showing me about. It was always about me. And and meaning, like, he wasn't showing me things about other people that I needed to go correct with them. It was, he was showing me these things because there were unhealthy connections that were affecting my trajectory and it. my mm-hmm. life. And so anyway, I began to study this and understand this. And so before we talk about soul ties, I think in the remaining minutes we have in this episode, let's, let's just establish what is this soul thing? And I know you talk about yep. this so much, but yes. I'll give let's you a very it. high level. The soul, we are, we are tripartite beings. We are, we are made in God's image. City. We know He is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We understand that. And we know that in the family of man, there is there's the man, there's the, the woman, and then they cr- procreate and create offspring. So it's husband, wife, children. So there's, there's this pattern we see. So in the, in the individual, in the human being, there is spirit, there is soul, there is body. Uh, there is the spirit part of us, which is that part of us that's connected to God, is a part of God, is directly out of God. Uh, that part of us is very unique. Then there is, of course, our physical body that we deal with ailments and pains, and, and it's how we get things done with our hands and with our feet, how we move, how we operate in life. Mm-hmm. But the, the part that connects the, the spirit and the, the, the body is this arena that's called the soul. The soul is simply this compartment that contains the mind, the will, the emotions, the memories, the beliefs, the thoughts, all these things, the, the, the ideologies. It's where we hold our core beliefs. It's where we... It's where our emotions are seated. And so it is in that place that is uh, where, where we tend to struggle. It's where the short circuit happens. The Bible says... For some of us, shorter than others. Whatever. <laughs> or bigger than others. Yeah, 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 right, right. <laughs> uh, so the, the Bible says, it has this interesting verse, uh, Lisa, that says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm-hmm. I, and I've always, okay, what, what, whatever, what does that mean? Well, it's very simple. The spirit of man is connected to God, especially if you're born again. Mm-hmm. And and that's why when God speaks a word to you or you hear somebody preach or teach something and, and your something in you goes, yes, that's it. Oh my gosh, that's, you know. Yes. And something literally leaps in you, comes alive in you and resonates with what you just heard. You mm-hmm. physically heard it, but your spirit man is screaming yes. Mm-hmm. And, and in that moment, we, we rationally decide, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to mm-hmm. engage. And then all of a sudden, we, we were months down the road, and what we knew in that moment of revelation and understanding by the Spirit was right and mm-hmm. good and, and holy and all this stuff. What we knew in that moment never seems to manifest in our natural life. <laughs> we're like, what the heck? It's because there is a breakdown between the consciousness of the spirit and the the working out in our flesh. And it's in that soul. It's, and here's how I describe it real quickly, and we'll leave it with us today, and we'll come back and pick it up again. The, the, the spirit is the one who bears the seed, if you will. Okay, If you go to that pattern, you look at husband, wife, children. In a healthy marital relationship, a husband is intimate with his wife, and out of that procreative act, babies can be born, right? You feel me? So it produces I something. <laughs> okay, watch it. <laughs> All right, so watch this now. The spirit is the seed bearer. The soul is the womb. It's the carrier of that word. And so the health and the wellness and the wholeness of the soul 
in so many ways is going to determine the outcome of what that word is going to produce in your flesh. Mm -hmm. And so as we look at this idea of soul ties, understand this. All soul ties are relational in nature. They have connections to things, people, places, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, so we're relating to something or to someone. However, if there is something unresolved in my soulish arena about my, in my, my case, it was, it was a very tragic thing that happened to me as a kid and all the ramifications that came behind that, I'd never resolved that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there are a lot of people involved along the way over the years, in 22 years, uh, that I had to go back and mm -hmm. sort out, right? Mm -hmm. Soul tie-wise. But I have to go back and, and, and work with these things and sever the connections, the unhealthy emotional connections I have mm -hmm. with memories, with old events, even with people that I knew 20 years ago sometimes. I've gotta deal with those things in order to be set free, untethered, yeah, or, or remove the anchor, anchor. Mm -hmm. so that I can then move in the set direction sail. that I'm inviting. Yeah, and that's it. the thing we're gonna be talking about. Soul ties will define in the next session, but the soulish arena is where personal healing really happens. That's the piece we wanna work with and, and see you benefit from. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited about this entire series. Uh, real quick before we, uh, before we finish this episode, where can we find this book? Amazon.com. I, I just I put them all there. It's called The Ties That Bind. My name is Brian A. Holmes. I think this is A yep. down there. It yep. does. It does. And uh, you're welcome to read that. It's a it's an easy read. It is. It an easy may read. be a hard process for you. It depends. It's different for every person. Yeah. Walk through it. We take you step by step through the types of soul ties, and then at the very end, we walk you through a process of severing those, releasing yourself from those. Really good stuff. It's, it's quite awesome. Really good stuff. We have all of our counselors go through this on a personal level. Oh, wow. Um, so they read the book. So I would highly recommend the book. All right, that sums up for today. Yes. I'm excited to really dive into this. All right, you guys, between now and the next episode, remember, enforcing purpose, it starts with you. Mm -hmm.